Cycle one, hands-on science, the compass walk. I'm not labeling this with a week because it's labeled in our guide as week 24, but three years ago, I thought setting up a compass like course was a lot for the last week because the last week is so full of other extra things that that just felt like too much. So I had left myself a note, do this a different week. So I'm planning on probably having it at the beginning of the semester if the weather is okay. I'm having it either week 19 or week 20. So I don't even know which one yet, but really it could go anytime. So I took what was in the guide um, and essentially made my own kind of lesson plan. So I have a lot of what they wrote up here, what the essential um, foundations guide has up here. And then I added some pictures and a really brief explanation of how to read a compass. I have officially learned how to read a compass many times, including when I uh, got certified to scuba dive, but I just, it's one of those pieces of knowledge that I just don't keep in my head. And so maybe you're like me and you need some extra help remembering how the heck to read a compass. So this paper, which I will put in my shared Google Drive, I will link to that in the description of this video so that you can get this for yourself. But essentially the way that we're gonna use our 30 minutes this day, we're going to use our CC maps. So whatever maps you have in your community, all of them should have this compass rose on them. So get out your maps, get out your CC maps and look at this compass rose with your kids and discuss these cardinal directions of north, south, east and west. Um, you can talk about how we can use these cardinal directions to get from one place to another. You could even choose like something from that day's geography, whatever you learned that day, like if it was the Sahara Desert, you could say um, move north of the Sahara Desert, you know, move east of the Sahara, move west, move south. You could do um, a lot just with those four directions. And then the older your kids are and the more capable you think they are, you could add in like northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. So I've got... I have a little compass rose on here that has those extra um, four on there as well, just to help you remember that you can do those also. Um, so in addition to moving around on the map, north, south, east, west, you could also have them stand up and say, and just assign one of the walls is north. So if that wall is north, everybody face north. And then you could say, now everyone face south and have them just move their bodies. I mean, if your room is large enough, you could have them actually walk in those directions, but at a minimum, they could just face those directions. You could try throwing in those um, in-between ones like Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, Southwest, if your kids are old enough and you think they can handle it. And then for the oldest kids, you could actually get into how there are degrees when it comes to directions, and again, I have a picture on here that shows the um, compass rows and the degrees that we're talking about. So for the oldest kids, that's something that you could maybe even draw on the board or just talk through. Um, it also, it might help to do that also because that is what an actual compass looks like. It has degrees on it, so it will just look more familiar if you go over that with them. So once you have done kind of those directional things, then you're gonna pass out a compass to each student. I got these off of Amazon, they were about $9 each. They're nice, I mean, I, you know, they're not for um, super outdoorsy people or certainly not military grade by any stretch of the imagination, but these are nicer than the dollar store ones. So I felt like it was a worthy investment to get good quality compasses and we've actually found other uses for them here and there as well uh, in life. So I have loaned them out to other organizations and so it's been a good investment for us. Um, so every student will get a compass and the first thing you're going to do is look at the compass and identify the parts of the compass. So I had purchased the Cornerstone Educational Supply um, lesson plan and while I'm not using the lesson plan, I am using the picture from the lesson plan which tells the parts of a compass. So you can use this to teach each kid as they're looking at their very own compass, um, identify the parts of the compass. Once you have identified the parts, you're going to try to teach them how to actually use the compass. Now I'm going to try to do this in the video, but um, on this sheet, I actually uh, link to another video that I found of just a guy who clearly knows what he's talking about. And he does a really brief um, tutorial on how to read a compass. 
and all you can see is his compass. So I'm going to try to do sort of like that, but um, if you can't see it very well, just go Google or go find it on YouTube because um, it's, it's really good. But okay, so the main thing you want to keep in mind is, or one of the main things is that this thing called the travel arrow is going to be pointing the direction that you're walking. So if you get to a location and you need to walk a different direction, then you would switch it. You would switch the um, direction. Okay. So this one, for instance, that's so glary. Okay. Right now it's pointed up at east, but let's say we want to go north. Okay. So here's my N over here. I am going to rotate the N all the way until it aligns with my travel arrow. Okay. So it's right in a line with my travel arrow. And now, hang on, I'm trying to make it so you can see it really good. Okay, so now that I'm aligned, I am going to turn the compass slowly until I get the red magnetic needle inside of the orienting arrow is what this like um, hollow black one is called on my compass. So I'm going to keep going around until it's in. There it is. It's in. Hopefully you can see from that angle that it is in. Hopefully you can tell. Okay. It was, oh, I changed it again. Okay. So now that I have my magnetic needle, the red part inside the orienting arrow, that means I need to walk this direction that is north. All right. So now say I want to walk east. So I'm going to rotate my compass dial around to the E. And there is, you probably can't tell in my video, but there is a very handy little line that helps me um, be very precise about this. Sorry guys, I want you to be able to see this really well. So I'm around to my E, but now I need to get my magnetic needle inside the orienting arrow. So I'm going to start rotating my compass ever so slowly until I've got that magnetic needle inside the orienting arrow. There it is. So that means East is that direction, so I'm going to walk in that direction. So th that's the flyby of how to read a compass. I hope that you could, that that angle was decent enough. If it wasn't, seriously, just go find another YouTube video, you know, easy how to read a compass kind of a video. I also, though, I also wrote, this is part of why I made this, I, I wrote very simple instructions on how to read the compass, and I think if you could see what I was doing and read that, then you'll probably be all right. Once you've taught your kids how to read the compass, you're going to go on a compass walk. So you could either do this in your facility, like in the halls, or you could go all the way outside. It might just depend on time or your space or whatever, or the weather that day. But I'm going to have cones, just the cones that we use at recess, and there will be a note card under each cone that will say it will have a direction sign and it will have a number of feet. And for feet, I'm not talking 12 inches. I'm going to just, we're going to tell them to just take steps and to estimate. So if they, if they do a decent job of estimating, they'll get to the correct cone. So we're going to say feet. It'll have a number of feet to walk and in direction. So it might say um, north 20 feet or 20 feet north. I don't know what you do first, but 20 feet north. So they'll walk, they'll find their first use their compass to locate north then they'll walk their 20 feet. And if they're successful, they will be at the next cone. And I'm going to number the note cards so that they know that they're at the right next one because it's the next consecutive number. I think I will have it set up such that you could start at any cone. You would just know it's the right next cone because it was the next number. So it's not that you have to go one, two, three, four, five, but you could go 12, 13, 14, 15, something like that. And then the last one would swipe back around to the beginning. That is my plan so that kids can not be just following each other around. I don't want it to be quite that easy. So another thing to consider, I had this as um, one of my notes from three years ago, and I haven't decided if I'm going to actually do this in my community, but it's something that you could consider is having an older class and a younger class come and do this compass walk together 
and actually pair up an older and a younger student to work together because reading and compass will definitely be um, pretty intensive for parents um, and the older people that are around so that might be a really good idea because there just aren't going to be enough adults to um, help kids individually but I, I mean I think three years ago we just had you know one parent with three or four kids and it and it went fine because we you don't have all the time in the world this isn't through the woods at night or anything so just do the best you can I, th I think this is a really fun thing and I know that reading a compass is a good skill to have so now that I have had to teach you guys maybe I'll, maybe it'll stick this time for me probably not but here's hoping